you can see it for miles, a soaring arch above the trees. Most of the 72,000 names on its walls lie in the rolling farmland beyond. Across this ground, soldiers fell in waves on the worst day in British military history. How could German defences have held in the face of such a massive attack? Scouring German archives for the answer to that question, historian Peter Barton has uncovered evidence that British intelligence failings led them to disaster. The most secret intelligence was gathered under the battlefield, in the tunnels where men burrowed, fought and listened. All the way down the Somme battlefield there were underground German listening stations which intercepted through the ground British telephone communications. British uh, communication security was very poor. You can see here that the, the Germans have actually cracked the code so they know who's talking here. And here at 5.58 in the morning it says, I say John, if you talk to 60 down, that's the telephone line, you better be careful. You sometimes don't know where you are and they might hear us. You know, some people are very fond of listening. That's the Germans. This report, written on the morning of July the 1st, mm -hmm. says the listening stations have picked up word of an Allied attack at 5.30. They learned what was going on behind the British lines for months before the battle. And in the end, those telephone intercepting stations actually gave them pretty well the moment the attack would start. The Teepval Memorial, 45 metres high, majestic and tragic, will be at the heart of this week's commemorations. The memorial was designed by Sir Edwin Lutyens, the architect behind London's cenotaph. It was built on ground torn apart by the fighting. Lutyens, when he came to design it, had lost five nephews in the Great War. And so there was somehow the need to articulate a whole nation's loss for those people who were never found. Teepval has just emerged from a major restoration. The repair work from the foundations to the roof with its panorama of the battlefield has cost nearly two million pounds. The restoration work on the monument led to an unexpected discovery about a hundred yards away. This is all that remains of the German front lines. On the 1st of July 1916, machine guns mounted on the lip of these trenches inflicted terrible losses on British troops advancing towards the village. The Battle of the Somme lasted 141 days. The Teepval Memorial will forever stand sentinel over its victims. Robert Hall, BBC News. Time now for a look at all the weather news. Here's Alex Deakin. Hi there, Alex. Thanks very much, Clive. There's uh, further showers on the way over the next few days. A little bit of sunshine is likely here and there, but uh, overall this rather cool and breezy theme will continue into the first part of July. There will be some sunshine around, but as I say, heavy showers never too far away either. Some wet weather this evening and overnight across Northern Ireland, working into Northern England, Southern Scotland, bounds of showers drifting southwards across Southern parts of England and Wales. A breezy night for some and uh, temperatures generally about 11 to 15 degrees Celsius as we start Friday. Friday will be a mixture of sunshine and showers. Starts a bit grey and damp maybe across the extreme southeast, but it should cheer up here and uh, not too many showers across the south or quite late on. But further north, after maybe a largely dry start, heavy showers developing, turning thundery in the afternoon, the risk of hail. Some sunny spells here and there, but overall it's going to feel quite cool with that breeze. Temperatures in most places in the mid-teens, 19 or 20s, just about possible across the south. It remains rather unsettled through the weekend as well. That's all your weather from me for now. From front runner to no show, Boris Johnson pulls out of the race to become the next Tory leader. Mr Johnson, what's your message to Michael Gove? What's your message to Michael Gove? He led the charge for the Leave campaign in the referendum, but didn't have the backing he wanted. Having consulted colleagues and in view of the circumstances in Parliament, I have concluded that person cannot be me. They were the dream team on the road, but at the last minute, Michael Gove decided he'd be the better leader. While Boris has great attributes, he was not capable of uniting that team and leading the party in the country in the way that I would have hoped. Also standing is Theresa May, who says she's offering strong leadership and warns that politics is not a game. 
I don't often wear my heart on my sleeve. I just get on with the job in front of me. Also tonight, a new warning on the economy from the Governor of the Bank of England. Mark Carney says growth is likely to slow down and points to a cut in interest rates. Are you going to stand for the leadership? I'll be saying something later today. But she didn't. Angela Eagle decides today is not the day to take on Jeremy Corbyn in Labour's leadership battle. A hundred years on from the Somme, the battle that changed wartime injuries and led to medical advances. Coming up on Wimbledon Sports Day, it's a bumper day for the British fans because both of our number ones are in action on Centre Court.